Tonight I want to talk about something that you guys have been texting and commenting about. I have two children, so I'd say I'm pretty good at getting pregnant, but a lot of you out there are trying and struggling. So I want to talk about that tonight. Tonight's topic is the worst things about trying to get pregnant. If it was just about like having sex, we would not have an episode about this. So first, it gets way too clinical. When most people think of conceiving a child, their thought is like, oh, you get married and you go on a honeymoon and you just make one. And that's not how it happens a lot of the time for a lot of couples. You want your child to be conceived in this natural environment of like warmth and love and happiness. And when you're charting ovulation and you're like literally using a calendar to figure out the best day to make a baby, it takes a lot of the romance out of it, which is discouraging, especially if it does not work out for you the first couple of months, it turns into this like peeing on a lot of sticks, scheduling sex, monitoring your diet, monitoring your partner's diet, having to wait, which is such an annoying part of it because that's the way you know if that whole month was a success or a waste. So while I know it can get into this cycle of like non-romance kind of clinical, try to have as much fun with it as you possibly can and just make the most of the situation at hand. And at least you're getting some, you know, like you're having sex. <laughs> So next, the jealousy. I have the most insane baby fever right now. And I mean insane because now is not a reasonable time for me to have a child. I have two beautiful children already. And it just so happens that most of my friends are pregnant. And they're all posting pictures of their crib that they're setting up in their nursery and their bump progress photos and their gender reveal and all that shit. And I'm just like, fuck you. I love you, but fuck Fuck you, I'm so jealous. What we all need to realize is that this person is not taking anything away from you. It's not like their child is the child that you could have had. So while the jealousy is real, don't try to steal it because I know they smell really nice and like you might be tempted, but I've thought this through and it's just not gonna work. You don't wanna live your life on the run as good as their heads smell. Next, you become hyper aware of your body. Every little blip feels like something and you become this like hypochondriac of sorts. So like for me, I would have like a little gas bubble and be like, I think the baby's kicking. And it's like, no, I don't even know if I'm pregnant. <laughs> like it's gas. And it doesn't help that pregnancy symptoms are the same as period symptoms because you're bloated, you're moody, you know, you have a little bit of cramping. All that stuff like is either period or baby, but there's just no way of knowing which one it is. So you end up constantly convincing yourself that you're pregnant. But I've had friends tell me, I'm pregnant, I'm, I'm absolutely pregnant. I pushed my boob a bunch of times and it hurt. And I'm like, no, you just, you pushed your boob until it hurt. I feel like there's gotta be a better solution for this. Like, why don't our belly buttons just like pop out or something? Like, what is that? It's like a turkey thermometer. It's like pregnant. Oh, my switch flipped. There we go. So next, April Fools. I don't know who started this trend of just an announcement we're expecting. And it's like a piece of food on an ultrasound. That's not funny. First of all, it's so overdone. It's so stupid and it's very insensitive and it really bums people out who are trying to conceive and are unable to. So if you're thinking about doing a pregnancy announcement April Fools, it's been done. There are way better ideas. You come see me later. I will give you like 10 gold April for fool's jokes. That's all you need to know. And last, unsolicited advice. I don't know what it is about people who encounter someone who's trying and they decide to just blurt out all the stupid shit, but I've heard the weirdest stuff when it comes to trying to conceive. Like, oh, you gotta do it every day. Oh, just do it every day? Okay, that's fine if you're trying for like two weeks, but have you tried doing it every day for a fucking year? Do you know how sore you would be? <laughs> Like, that's just not possible. The best piece of advice is, when you stop trying is when it's gonna happen. Like, what do you mean by stop trying? You mean when you stop having sex? I don't know if you didn't take human development in school, or but you can't just stop having sex and then magically get pregnant. It's not how it works. And I'm realizing that I'm a total hypocrite, like making a whole video giving advice. I'm just trying to help you through it. As a person who's been through it, I'm just trying to create a safe space for it. When you look into your child's eyes, you're not going to remember like the sticks you peed on or the blood tests you took or the doctor's visits you had to do and like whatever process it took, whether it was conceiving or IVF 
or adoption. None of that matters. And however it happens, I hope it does happen for you. And when it does, it's gonna be everything. So to all of you out there who are trying, may your conception be fruitful, like this wine of grapes. So that's all I got for today. I'm Hannah, your friendly neighborhood wine mom. And if there's a topic you want me to talk about in a future episode or any experience you have with trying to conceive, leave it in the comments. Or you can always text me. I don't always respond, but I read every single one. I love to hear what you guys want me to talk about and I love hearing your personal stories. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go on Facebook and look at all my friends' pictures of their newborns to fuel my baby fever. Till next time. They're so cute. Oh my god, they're so little.